Here is an always works method for graphing reciprocal linear functions. What we mean by that is x is in the denominator of a fraction. The method that I'm going to show you here works for this type of function as well as certain functions that you'll see in grade 12 if you choose to take math that far. Here is what you're going to do no matter how complicated your function is. This method will always work. You're going to find a vertical asymptote by setting your denominator equal to zero. You're going to find a horizontal asymptote by imagining that x gets really, really big. You're going to find a y-intercept by setting x equal to zero. You're going to find an x-intercept by setting y equal to zero and you're going to do test values on either side of a vertical asymptote. Excuse the siren. So, in terms of graphing this, find the vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to zero. Denominator equal to zero. Vertical asymptote happens where denominator 13 minus 8x equals zero you're going to find this is pretty easy to solve. 13 equals 8x, that's moving the 8x over, and then divide both sides by 8. You get 13 divided by 8, which, according to my calculator, turns out to be 1.625. There's your vertical asymptote. We're going to find our horizontal asymptote by imagining that x gets really, really big. So, take a look at this. When x gets really big, then negative 8x gets really, really big. 13 minus 8x gets really, really, really big in a negative way because if x is a million here, you have 13 minus 8 million. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger on the bottom. If you divide by a bigger and bigger number each time, negative 17 divided by, for example, negative 8 million is a really, really, really small number. And this fraction just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. It starts to not even matter. And the whole function itself, y, gets closer and closer to minus 4 because this fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Another way to put that is if there's a number added or subtracted from the end, that's your horizontal asymptote. Your horizontal asymptote here is y equals negative 4. You can just accept it that way if you want. Find your y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. Well, that's something you've done since grade 9. Your y-intercept is y equals negative 17 divided by 13 minus 8 times 0 minus 4. Negative 17 over 13 minus 0 is 13. And if I was to do this on my calculator, I'd get negative 17 divided by 13 minus 4. You get negative uh, 5.31. Here's my y-intercept, x-intercept set y equal to 0. So, x-intercept 0 equals negative 17 over 13 minus 8x minus 4. This is going to be a little trickier. We move our 4 over. 4 equals negative 17 over 13 minus 8x. And the way that I would solve an equation like that is to cross multiply 4 times 13 minus 8x equals negative 17 times 1. Looks like I'm going to need another sheet of paper here. What that means is that 52 minus 32x equals negative 17. Take a look at how I'm multiplying the 4 through. And negative 32x is negative 17 minus 52. 
negative 32x is negative uh, 69. Oh man, this is just complicated algebra, isn't it? x is negative 69 divided by negative 32. Negative 69 divided by negative 32 turns out to be uh, 2.16. All right, and finally, I want to do test values on either side of the asymptote. The asymptote was 1.625. So let's do test values at, uh, I'll label this test values. Let's do test values at uh, 1.5, which is on the uh, left side and at 1.7. It's on either side of the asymptote, the left and the right, less than 1.6, more than 1.6. The way that we do that is to plug 1.5 into the original fraction, negative, one, or negative 17 divided by 13 minus 8, 1.5 minus 4. Here we have negative 17 divided by 13 minus 8, 1.7 minus 4. And obviously you're going to use a calculator for this. Negative 17 divided by, then the denominator in brackets, 13 minus 8 times 1.5. Then I'm going to subtract 4 off of that. I get negative 21. Let's do the same thing for 1.7. Negative 17 divided by 13 minus 8 times 1.7. Then I'm going to subtract 4 off of that. I get uh, positive 24.3. All right. You probably think that was too much work. But watch how easy that makes it to graph. I'm not even going to use a grid here. Here's my coordinates, my coordinate plane, I should say. All right, what have I got? Vertical asymptote at x equals 1.6. x equals 1.6. What I'm going to do is put a dotted line all the way down there. That's at 1.6. I got a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 4. So I go down to y equals negative 4 put a horizontal asymptote there. That's at negative 4. Those are asymptotes. Remember that's what we called them here. Those are lines that the function is going to get closer and closer to but never actually touch. That's what makes it an asymptote. We've got a y-intercept at negative 5.31. Negative 5.31 might be about here. We've got a x-intercept at, oh, where did we calculate the x-intercept? 2.16. 2.16 might be about here. We've got a point at 1.5, negative 21. 1 1.5 is just to the left of 1.6, and negative 21 is way down here. We've also got a point at 1.7, 24.3. 1 1.7 is just to the right, and 24.3 is way up here. It's not even on my grid. These test values are there to help show you which direction the function points in. Your job now is to draw curves through these points that do not touch the asymptotes. Here. We have to go through this point and this point, but we can get closer and closer and closer to this, as, to this asymptote as long as we don't actually touch it. We would probably get closer and closer and closer to that vertical asymptote without touching it as well. Here, we've got two points. We need a curve that goes through both of those, but it can get closer and closer and closer to that asymptote without actually touching it. And this is the graph of that reciprocal function. Reciprocal functions always have a vertical asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, 
and they get closer and closer to each asymptote without actually touching it. Those are the key features, and this is the always works way of graphing it.